Thanks for tuning in to Dirty Teeth and welcome back to the channel. About six months ago, I went all out and upgraded my bikepacking dynamo light and charging setup to the latest and greatest offerings from K-Lite. In this video, I'll run you through the ins and outs of the kit as a whole, dive into each specific piece of the puzzle, and let you know my thoughts after thoroughly putting it through the paces. Join me inside. I consider myself an if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of guy. I've been using the same dynamo setup very happily for about four years on my salsa cutthroat without issue. Unfortunately, I crashed during a bikepacking race and shredded my old K-Lite wiring harness. I actually caught the crash on camera. If you're curious, I'll put the link in the description. Actually, why don't I just play it right now? Okay. Anyway, I was gonna have the harness repaired, but with the encouragement of some friends, I decided to upgrade to the latest and greatest. Who knows when you're watching this, but as I upload this video in March 2022, these are the newest and gucciest component offerings from K-Lite. Dynamo lights for bikepacking are pretty niche. For the most part, they haven't progressed as quickly as other cycling technology over the past few years. However, Kerry Strait has been pushing the envelope of Dynamo technology ever since he introduced the Little Orange Bikepacker Pro back in 2015. In terms of competition, there's really just a few quality options out there that are designed for the demands of serious bikepacking. You've got the old guard of the super Nova E3 Triple and the Exposure Revo. Both are time tested, but neither has seen any meaningful upgrades recently. Dare I say they're becoming antiquated? The Sine Wave Beacon is a relatively new kit on the block and has some fantastic forward thinking features. Honestly, aside from the K Lite, this is the only other lamp I'd consider purchasing right now. But feature for feature, K Lite's newest Bike Packer Ultra V2 separates itself from the pack. P.S. If I'm leaving out a lamp you love, let me know in the comments. I'm also drawn to the burly construction of all K-Lite products and to the simplicity of their complete plug and play system. Their components are expedition rated and designed to mate perfectly with each other. Knowing that I could easily source backup and replacement parts or have repairs handled easily was also a driving factor in my decision. Although K-Lite and Carry are based in Australia, I've been dealing with their official US importer and distributor, Matt at Jefe Velo. He offers a wealth of knowledge, fantastic customer support, and you can order K-Lite products directly from his website. With that said, let's get at it. The Full Monty K-Lite system as I'm describing it today consists of a wiring lumen switch, the Bike Packer Ultra V2 light, a dual USB charger, a cube rear blinky light, and a voltaic cache battery. The basic kit, which includes a lamp, wiring lumen switch, and a USB charger, comes in at about 500 US dollars. If you choose to add on the cube rear blinky light, that's 130 bucks, and the smallest voltaic cache battery is 40. So for everything I'm reviewing today, you're looking at about 670 bucks. You can order everything a la carte as well, if you wanna mix and match to suit your needs. Also to be clear, Voltaic is its own company and it's the only piece of this kit not made by K-Lite. But they've tested it and sell it alongside their products for reasons I'll discuss in a bit. For all you weight weenies tuning in, I'll let you know the specifics of each item as I dig in. First up, the wiring harness. Yes, it's totally possible to make your own DIY wiring loom if you're into that kind of stuff. Usually I am, but this is one area where I leave it to the pros. Think of the wiring loom as the spinal cord that connects all of the elements of a dynamo power system. It takes the energy generated at your hub and transfers it to your light and or USB charger. So if it fails, everything fails. No bueno. The K-Lite harness, along with the rest of the system, excluding the cache battery, is completely water and weatherproof. It includes a toggle switch, which is traditionally used to guide power towards either your light or charger. But the newest version is what K-Lite calls a USB always on loom. When you're not using your lamp during the day, you can toggle the light off and 100% of the juice goes towards your USB charger. At night, when your light is toggled on, most of the power is directed towards the lamp, but it still sends some juice towards the charger. This allows you to use K-Lite's cube rear blinky, which I'll discuss in a sec. You can also directly power GPS units like the Wahoo Element Roam. Or continue to charge items through the night with your light on, albeit at a much slower rate. It's kind of like having your cake and eating it too. The loom, including the switch, weighs in at 58 grams. It's offered with connectors that are either compatible with Shimano and Shutter Precision or Sun Dynamo hubs. I'm currently using it on a Shutter Precision hub. The loom is designed specifically for plug and play with K-Lite's lamps and USB charger. It's worth noting that it can be modified to be internally routed through some forks. It can also work with non-K-Lite components or lights by adding the appropriate connectors. 
If you plan on doing this, I recommend contacting K-Lite or Jefe Velo before purchasing. Just to make sure everything's kosher and you don't void your warranty by hacking into the loom. I put countless hours on my old K-Lite loom without issue. So obviously I expected nothing less with this new one. And happily I've had zero issues with this wiring loom. It's performed flawlessly in every kind of riding condition and environment. The switch has a nice positive feel to it, the same as it did on day one. The connectors are rugged and snug fitting and I've never once hinted at vibrating loose. I usually wrap the connectors in electrical tape for an added layer of security, but I purposely didn't for this test. Still no issues. I was a little skeptical about the USB always on feature. I enjoy keeping it simple and knowing that all the power is either going towards my lamp or the charger. I was nervous that the light wouldn't be as bright or effective since some power is getting trickled away. I'll discuss the light in a moment, but it was plenty bright and I never felt any sacrifice at all. In the past, I've accidentally bumped the switch during the day only to find out later that nothing's charging. Come on, we've all done it. So I've grown to like the peace of mind that even if I bump the switch and don't notice it for a while, the charger's still doing something. Next up is the light itself. K-Lite currently offers three versions of the Bikepacker Ultra V2 Dynamo Light. Mountain bike, gravel, and a low drag road model. Which one should you choose? Good question. The gravel and mountain versions are both 1300 lumens and optimized for eight miles an hour and under. The only difference is the lenses covering each of the three optics. The MTB version uses two flood lenses on the outer lights. Above eight miles an hour, a spot lens kicks in in the middle, throwing farther down the trail. With this setup, the primary outer optics create an ultra-wide 180-degree beam, which K-Lite says eliminates the need for a helmet light. It also creates a wide stand light. K-Lite markets this model towards people doing races like the Tour Divide. On the other hand, the gravel or Hilux version uses two spot lenses on the outer lights. Above eight miles an hour, a flood lens kicks in in the middle, providing a wider, closer spread. A lot of people confuse Lux with lumens. Even though the MTB and gravel versions have the same lumens, the Lux changes depending on beam shape. The two narrow spot beams create a higher Lux than the wider flood lenses on the MTB model. So the gravel version is designed for higher speeds where you want a brighter, farther throw down the trail or gravel road. Likewise, the stand light has a punchier beam as well. The low drag road model is only 750 lumens, but it comes with three spot lenses. It's designed for throwing light deep on asphalt roads with the most minimal energy drag possible. This is aimed at people doing races like the Transcontinental or Trans Am. You're probably assuming I went with the mountain bike version. Actually, I got the gravel model to use on my salsa cutthroat. Here's my logic. I'm not trying to replace my helmet light. I always have a light on my bars and my helmet while bikepacking. I like a light that turns with my head no matter where my bars are facing. And I like redundancy in case one light fails. A helmet light is also crucial to have at camp, setting up your tent, hanging food in a tree, or simply just working on your bike if you have a mechanical. You get the point. I also think about when my dynamo light is most important. For me on this bike, it's all about high speed descents, usually on gravel roads. I want the brightest, punchiest light as I try to recognize hazards as far ahead as possible. I'm getting old, so bright is good for these tired eyes and it helps keep the sleep monsters away. If you're curious, my helmet light of choice is currently an exposure joystick or a Phoenix PD36R. So maybe you're asking what about routes like the Colorado Trail and the Arizona Trail where it's single track heavy and the average speeds are way slower. In those cases, I definitely consider the MTB version. But honestly, for shorter adventures and slower riding, I usually go old school with no dynamo system. I rarely go fast enough for my light to stay bright or meaningfully charge my devices anyway. The first thing I asked is if they sell spot and flood lenses separately so I could swap them in and out to taste. Unfortunately, they're inside a sealed unit, so that's not an option. You'd have to buy a completely separate light a la carte for 290 bucks. Now my takeaway on the light. Starting with the pros, the rubber casing is super rugged and designed to take a beating. It's handled endless vibration and trail chatter, as well as mud, rain, and inclement weather. The lamp is nice and bright at high speeds, which I expected given the 1300 maximum lumens. I'm pleasantly surprised at how quickly it kicks in after just a few pedal revolutions and how bright it is at slower speeds. The whole boosted for lower speeds thing isn't just marketing hype. The stand light is also impressive. I could get an easy five to 10 minutes of stored light, which is an added bonus. The color temp is soothing on the eyes and blends well with my helmet light. Overall, I'm extremely pleased with the V2 and it's performed as well, if not better than advertised. In my mind, there's only a few potential drawbacks. Number one, the weight. It's the heaviest of its counterparts, coming in at 133 grams. This is related to number two, the size. It's fairly cumbersome compared to its competition, but it does have three generous lens optics and is 500 lumens brighter than its nearest competitor. Considering how bright and rugged the unit is, I'm totally fine with the extra weight and size, but it is worth mentioning. The only other small issue I had is with mounting options. It comes with a plastic 3D printed handlebar mount, which weighs 67 grams. The thought is if there's any impact, the plastic mount will break before the light. Kind of like the philosophy behind a derailleur hanger breaking before a costly derailleur. 
However, this mount is bulky and lacks elegance compared to other CNC options out there. In addition, the bolts it came with weren't long enough to get any purchase on my Easton 318 carbon drop bars. No big deal, but I had to go to the hardware store and buy some longer bolts. It's also worth noting you need an 8mm and 10mm open wrench to snug up the mount. This could be a bummer if you don't already have those tools in your workshop. On the bright side, the kit includes an adapter with a GoPro interface. This opens it up to a lot of aftermarket mounting opportunities. A few of my friends have switched over to sleeker K-Edge mounts and I'll probably follow suit. With that said, it's been rock solid ever since I got it dialed and I haven't had to adjust it or tighten it once. Another red flag I want to bring up is with their optional fork crown mount. My V1 Salsa Cutthroat Carbon Fork comes with a threaded crown insert. So I decided to give this mount a try. It sounded great on paper, but I think the light's heavier than what's intended with my carbon fork. It had a tendency to wiggle loose, so I had to keep torquing it down. The threaded insert started spinning and eventually popped out of the fork. Nobody's fault, just keep it in mind if you're planning on using it with a carbon fork and a threaded insert. I doubt this would be a problem with a metal fork and a welded braze on. This takes us to the dual USB charger. It weighs 68 grams and you guessed it, boasts two charging ports and plugs directly into the K-Lite wiring loom. It converts the variable AC current generated at your hub into steady 5 volt DC current for your charging pleasure. It has a red LED light which lets you know when it's on and popping, usually starting at speeds around 5 miles an hour. As with the other K-Lite components, it's 100% waterproof, weatherproof, and vibration proof. You can charge or power two devices at the same time. For example, charging a cache battery and powering a GPS device at the same time if that's your jam. You can also plug it directly into your iPhone or Android phone if you'd like. In terms of mounting, there's a couple of zip tie ports and ample room to slap on some Velcro. Not much else to say about it other than it does its job. It's simple and clean. Just a 3D printed block with no permanent cables running from it. Having both the input and output ports on the same side is a bonus for me. I have it strapped inside my Revel 8 Tangle bag and guide all the cables through the hydration port. Very tidy. I try to keep it easy and don't charge any devices directly through the unit. I usually keep the juice flowing to a cache battery that's plugged into one output. I'll then use a cache battery to charge my Garmin, cell phone, etc. But it is nice to know I can charge electronics directly if the need arises. This unit is heavier and bulkier than the sine wave revolution, but having two outputs is key. I'm a big fan of redundancy, especially with electronics. The second port is also great if you're running their cube light, which I've been doing. It draws next to no power, but uses a USB connection. Speaking of the cube, it's K-Lite's very own dynamo-powered rear blinky light. It's designed to draw minimal power from the USB charger while using the always-on wiring loom. This way, it flashes whenever you're moving. It also has a minute or two of stand time. So just in case you're stopped shoveling in some food or checking a map, it won't shut off. The power draw is so minimal, it won't affect your light or any items you might be charging at the same time. If you plan to power it from a cache battery, beware its draw is so minute that many batteries might not even recognize it and just shut down. The voltaic battery that K-Lite recommends allows trickle current and thus will power the cube. I also tested it with a Jackery I had lying around and it worked fine as well. The unit is tiny, weighs only 47 grams, and is of course waterproof and weatherproof. It comes with three sizes of mounting hardware for seat post and seat stay options. I chose to mount mine to the seat stay so it's visible past the seat bag or rear rack. The USB cable is 35 inches long and at first I wasn't stoked on yet another cable. But I was able to route it pretty stealthy over the top of my frame bag through the hydration port to the charger. Not too shabby. It blinks a short set of flashes followed by a longer one and it's pretty random which I like. It's also bright enough to be decently visible in daylight. The cube also features anti-glare optics. These are designed to hit cars at a distance with the full power of the light while not blinding riders that may be right behind you. It's very minimal with only one setting. So no futzing between different blink patterns or turning it off to save the battery. I don't have to sweat charging it, forgetting to turn it on, or wondering if it died. Basically, I don't have to think, which is perfect for bikepacking. The last piece of the system is a cache battery. Obviously, you can use whatever battery you prefer. I decided to try the V25. It's the smallest and lightest of the three voltaic models that Jefe Velo offers. It weighs 160 grams and still packs a punch with 6400 milliamp hours. For reference, my iPhone 12 mini has a battery with 2200 milliamp hours. The V25 gets me a couple charges. It takes me about three hours to charge my iPhone from zero to full. It takes around a full day of riding to get a full charge on the V25 from my Dynamo Hub. But this all depends on average speed and the power the hub is generating. I usually prefer to carry two smaller batteries versus one big guy. One does the charging while one's being charged. In case one gets broken or damaged, I've always got a backup. The Voltaic checks the three boxes I look for in a bikepacking cache battery. It accepts a trickle charge from Dynamo Hubs. It offers pass-through charging. 
This means it provides outflow from the battery while it's being charged. It also provides low current flow with no automatic shutoff. This is perfect for directly powering low draw units like GPS devices and the cube light. It is a little bigger in size than most comparable batteries, but it has a rugged rubberized housing and two USB output ports. This is cool because you can potentially charge two items at the same time. It also has two options for input, USB-C and micro USB. Not to be redundant, but this all adds up to redundancy in case one port stops working. I doubt this will happen, but it gives me peace of mind and a chance to throw out a corny pun. Hey! The battery has worked great for me so far, and for 40 bucks, it's worth the reliability and features it offers. Even if you don't want or need the whole K-Lite system, I'd recommend this cache battery on its own. You can pick it up from Hefe Velo, directly from Voltaic, or even on Amazon. Just a reminder, links for everything I've discussed are in the description. Whew, that was a mouthful. If you're in the market for a complete dynamo lighting and charging system, look no further, K-Lite has you covered. I'm super happy this worry-free setup is on my bike so I can focus on riding. If you gleaned anything useful out of this video, please give us a like. Questions and thoughts? You know what to do? Leave them in the comments below. I upload fresh bike packing and mountain biking content every week, so please consider subscribing to the channel and tapping the notification bell. I also hope you'll think about joining our Trail Magic Monday campaign of giving on Patreon. Until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward. Thanks so much for squeezing dirty teeth into your busy schedule. Please help us reach more people and ensure you receive new videos by giving this video a like, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the notification bell. Until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward.